Hey, Zachary, this is Officer Wilson coming to the police. Uh, just trying to reach out to you and make sure you um, got some papers that are concerned about your well-being. Uh, they haven't heard from you. Said you were supposed to be back in Palmetto by now. Uh, you can give me a call if you get this message. Thanks. So, you know, you're living your life, driving from gig to gig, putting miles in your car, then all of a sudden, you know, everything changes. 911, where's your emergency? There's been a bad wreck on Highway 44. Okay, and can you tell me, sir, is, do you see any obvious injuries or anything? Yes, his face is busted up, he's bleeding. He's okay. the, front, the whole front of the car. The whole front Are you of the car involved? is smashed. Uh, no, I'm not involved, I was just coming by it. Okay, you didn't see this happen, did you? No, but it just happened. Okay, is he conscious at least? He is conscious and talking, but he's uh, he's in pain. It's like those dreams you have that feel really weird, but they're still a dream. It's, it's like such a combination of that. Like you don't know what was really real. You don't know what was a dream. Obviously, the ch -ch 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 helicopter sound in my ear, that was obviously real, because later you find out I've been flighted on a helicopter to the hospital. I feel like... I feel like I remember somebody being lifted up out of the vehicle. And like I said, obviously it had to be real because somebody had to pull me out of the car. So the accident happened, it was around 12.30 on a Saturday night. Uh, the driver hit me head on. He was driving on the wrong side of the road, which is kind of hard to do because on this particular road, it was like one of those county roads that has like the big grassy median in between the two directions of traffic so for you to be on the wrong side of the road on the other side of that median is pretty crazy so my life before the accident I'm basically a working model and actor so which means I do a lot of traveling based in the southeastern part of the United States so I might go to Atlanta for a feature film or TV series and then might have to go down to Miami for a commercial and all points in between, you know, Orlando, Tampa. So constantly on the go when you're in the Southeastern market versus like the LA market or the New York market where you stay in the same general area. So your car gets a lot of miles, you're all over the place. I'd say I mean, at least like 3,500 miles a month, something like that, it's a lot. So yeah, I was, you know, leaving a gig, um, did the New Smyrna Beach, wake up in a hospital you see a nurse, you don't know if it's a dream, you don't know if it's real. She tells you, hey, you've been in an accident, you need to rest. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, you know, am I going to be okay? Because I can't move, I'm really weak, I've got stuff up my nose from the tubes, I've got my wires in my teeth, I look, I've got staples on my arms. I. You know, I can't even see because I had contact lenses. I'm, I'm legally blind, so my contact lenses were out. So it was like really surreal because it's like, okay, what's gonna happen now? Is this really happening? Is this a dream? And little by little, you know, after you spend a certain amount of time in the hospital, you continue to discover more and more details about what your situation is, how your life's gonna be, details of the accident and the injuries. And it's a lot to take on. I mean, it's a lot. It changes in your life, but you know, in, in my mind, it's you, know, you have to trust the people that are your caretakers, and you've got to be willing to fight. I believe I had about 11 surgeries total. Um, they took my spleen out, they cut a foot of my small intestine off. I had uh, my legs, uh, I had to get a skin graft on one and a tib fib fracture. My ankle, I broke my arm, my jaw, my nose. I had a little bit of brain bleeds too. I'm just thankful, very thankful that I didn't really have any substantial head, neck, or spinal injuries. I had some, a little bit in the back and, and the brain bleeds, but it was super minor. So when you see an accident like this, when you look at the pictures, you think, man, I mean, if that person is alive, they're gonna be like a vegetable or they're gonna be paralyzed. And for me, 
you know, when I think of major accident, it's either death, head, neck, spinal injuries. That's what it comes down to. So the fact that I didn't die and my head is okay in a good place, my spine's okay, and my neck, right, that's a huge deal because, you know, I've, unfortunately, you know, I only have one limb, my left arm that came out of this without a problem, but, you know, my right arm broken, my right thumb broken, my right lower leg, I was this close to needing a prosthetic leg, so thankfully the skin graft saved me. And then my left ankle broke as well, so, you know, I felt like a bug that had been stepped on and only has one arm that still works. And I mean, my physical therapy, like in the hospital was basically to sit up as long as I possibly could. Sit me up out of the bed, put me in a chair. And that was therapy. Sit there as many hours as you can. And then when you can't handle it anymore, we'll call you, we'll put you back in the bed. And it was like, just sitting in a chair for like two hours felt like running 10 miles. Like that's how discombobulated your body gets from being laid up for so much time. It's like, it was amazing. It's like, you know, here you are, you're a fitness person, you're used to bench pressing this, you're used to running that, and you can't even sit up out of bed. You can't even sit in a chair without your heart rate going bump, 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 feeling like you're running 10 miles. It's unbelievable. After several weeks in the ICU and a couple months in the hospital, he's finally released, and that's kind of where uh, I got in touch with him. I mean, I was in touch with him in the hospital, but in a limited fashion. We didn't know where Zach was. So some friends, uh, even family members, we, we were trying to figure out where he was for a couple of days and they finally found out where he was, but he was incapacitated. He was on a ventilator, very sick. So we were really worried and having 11 years of experience in the emergency room, I was real worried uh, hearing what I was hearing that, you know, Zach, as we know him, probably wouldn't be the same or come back. So he he progressed and he got to the point where he could talk after a couple of weeks and cognitively he was he was there pretty good he was able to text and he was eventually discharged home so uh when i finally was discharged from the hospital they were like okay well you can't be here anymore you got to go home like we're either going to send you down to broward county or we're going to send you with your brother so they're like we're going to give you a wheelchair we're going to give you a commode and hit the road so they stuck me in a it was like a transport, which is basically you're on this super uncomfortable stretcher, no pillow, nothing. It was like a freaking hard mat. Sure, they load you in the back of the van. It was basically like an Amazon truck van is what this transport was and drove me three hours all the way to Manatee County from Daytona. And it was rickety and bumpy. And I felt like I, like I, like I got back in another accident by the time I got home. It was so brutal. I just felt boom, 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 three hours. He should have been in a skilled uh, rehab facility with basically somebody to help him wipe his butt and do everything for, for that time. They usually do that when they have two, two limbs that aren't working. He had three limbs that weren't up to par. So I was surprised he was put in that position. Not only that, but just seeing him in the bed, that's kind of like my uh, wheelhouse. You're like, oh, so let's see what's going on. So I started assessing all of his in injuries and looking at everything. And, and I started asking him questions and I'm like, how long has, have those sutures been in there? For example, on his, on his right leg, he had sutures and staples all over him. And he's already been out eight, nine weeks. Typically a suture and a staple should only be in for like 10 to 14 days. So I'm like, thought to myself, what are these still doing here? Bones healing four to six weeks. He's still in cast. And I'm like, what are these still doing here? So I started, looking at things and it wasn't the best. He had some really thick sutures over his knee that became part of him. Basically they were embedded in the skin, which uh, kind of pissed me off. You know, like that, that should never happen. So I'm like, hold on. I, I went out to my car. I have some basic medical equipment in my car. I, you know, got what I could out and I just started torturing Zach, pulling stuff out, cleaning stuff up. And I'm just like, what is going on here? So I took out a bunch of sutures, started taking out some staples. I'm like, you know what? After a while, I'm like, I'm just gonna bring you here to the clinic and uh, take care of it. I'm gonna find out that the total tally for the hospital was $2.1 million, and that's not even counting any of the surgeries after the fact or anything I still have to do from this point forward. So it's crazy to me, like that blew my mind because I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. and. Something, you know, I was minding my own business. All of a sudden, bam, I got this whole situation on my hands. 
I came to South Florida Injury. I was in a wheelchair. And, you know, we wanted to get right to work. We wanted to get me back on my feet as soon as possible. So, you know, we did all of our exercises with the physical therapy, you know, strengthen the knees, strengthen the ankles, all that stuff. And they got me back up on my feet. And honestly, if it was not for waiting for the weight bearing clearance for the orthopedics, I'm pretty sure we would have got back up on my feet a lot sooner. But, you know, you got to follow the doctor's orders. We did the imaging and got him to see the specialist and kind of got a green light to, so he can start rehabbing doing more rehab and a lot of that was done at request physical therapy and just the job that was done with him. I mean, there's, there's a couple people who say like, who did the most work to get him where he is today? There's fast words that he's doing great. I mean, he's, he's, he seems to be back to where he was before the accident, which is, which if you would have asked me when I first saw him, I'd say there, there's no way. I had very little hope that that'd be the case, but probably most of the work, Zach, his attitude, his, his willingness to work, and go through that. He, he was doing therapy five, six times a week here in the clinic for a couple hours. He was doing it at home before and after. I mean, it was just nonstop. He just wanted to get back to his regular life. Then the other part was request physical therapy. They were spending the most time with him, you know? So here I am, we're gonna do a PRP injection on my knee. It's been overdue, so I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. That was the first thing they used to tell me in the hospital. Okay, I'm gonna have to put this tube up your nose. I'm like, I'm sorry about it. Do what you gotta do. Relax. Cut me, Mick. Big poke. You know? Okay. One, yep. two, three, big poke. You doing okay? I'm perfect. Great. Never better. <laughs> Bionic. Deep breath. Feel that one, holy cow. Feels like a freaking tire inflating. <laughs> Good gosh. So is that taking off any pressure? Or? No, well, no, no, it adds well pressure. this doesn't work right, like, so we, we inject it with numbing medicine and steroids sometimes, it'll feel better right away. This is a long game thing, so you don't get relief right away. So all, like he said, it feels like a tire's going up. I put the needle into the joint and blew up the joint space, so just a bunch of fluids in there. So it doesn't make it feel better or anything, it actually probably makes it feel worse. So the platelets, now that they're in there, they get activated, they release the growth factors. The growth factors take time to do what they do. So you start feeling relief probably in like three to seven days, you'll start noticing a difference. Yeah. And you start seeing the peak effect like at 10 days to two weeks. So when we, we have a joint, the typical chat is like, hey, uh, it doesn't get better right away. You need to give it a couple of days, at least, you know, three, three, day, three to seven days, kind of what we've seen. Mm -hmm. And then we do multiple treatments. We've injected Zach's knee, that's probably three or four times now over yeah. a year or so. Uh, but you can get it treated every two to three weeks. So, you know, the PRP has helped me a lot, not just with the joints, but, you know, with the skin as well. You know, my, my scars, I mean, you know, it was, my scars are more flat now. They look better. They were more 3D before. So it was very important, especially somebody that's on camera. You know, you don't want to go around with, you want to you wanna solve the scar situation as best you can. So the PRP helped a lot with that. PRP the scar, microneedled it a little bit. And I mean, this whole thing was like blood red because we just drilled it. And now it looks way better than what it did. Now, where all did you have the PRP done? Total, I've done PRP in my foot. I've done PRP in my ankle. I've done PRP in my knee. I think we hit the shoulder one time. Then my, my abs underneath the eyes. It's just, PRP is an amazing thing, and I'm very thankful for it because it's not only is it good for your function, it's good for your appearance as well. So it's funny because for my 40th birthday, I decided I wanted to do something that I've never done before, and that was skydiving. Because I figure, you know, after you experience certain things in life, why not, right? There's things, you know, that maybe we're never going to be able to experience before. So I, I don't take that for granted. You know, every day is, is a blessing. So I want to experience as many things as I can. So. If it wasn't for me coming here and, and doing all my therapy and my recovery here, there's no way I would have been able to do that. Ah! Yeah! Oh my God, that's awesome! Woo! Oh my God, that is amazing!